imagine a world where breast cancer had become a thing of the past. Your first reaction might be, this sounds like clickbait, to draw me into some conspiracy theory or maybe to sell me an anti-cancer diet. But no, this is the ambition of the Prevent Breast Cancer Research Team at the University of Manchester, of which I'm part. And that's why I'm here today, to inspire you with a vision of the future, of how it might be possible one day to prevent breast cancer, not overnight, but for the sake of the next generation. My own story uh, began many years ago when I was a young surgeon working in a breast cancer clinic. I'd have to break the bad news to someone that she had breast cancer. I'd book her in for surgery. I'd book her for a chemotherapy appointment. She'd meet with a specialist nurse. And then there was a knock on the door. I have another patient for you. So into the next room, break the bad news, book her in for surgery, and then another knock on the door. And another knock on the door. And it felt to me as if I was working on a production line with a never-ending conveyor belt of patients going through the system. And as I met those patients on that conveyor belt, these were real people whose lives had just been turned upside down. We were doing our best, but that conveyor belt never seemed to stop. Hang on. Surely there must be some way we could stop women getting on that conveyor belt in the first place. Was that even possible? Was that dream just too ambitious? But we had to do something. And so in 1996, we began the Prevent Breast Cancer Initiative to build a research team to prevent breast cancer, to slow that conveyor belt down, and maybe, just maybe one day, we could stop it. A question that many women would ask in the clinic was, why has this happened to me? My answer would be that no one can make themselves immune from breast cancer, no matter how healthy a lifestyle you lead. And that's simply because there is no one simple thing that causes breast cancer. Rather, it's caused by a combination of factors, all conspiring together to make this disease one of the biggest health problems of our time. The medical word is multifactorial. And for, for most women, there are likely to be seven or eight different things in their lives, all combining to give them their breast cancer risk. So, in our quest to prevent breast cancer, the obvious place to start is with those risk factors. What would happen if we knew what they all were? How important each of them was? and how they fit together. Maybe then we could do something to stop them. So, let's do that now. Let's build up a chart of the risk factors, and we're going to start at the top with genetics. And the first piece in the chart are those breast cancer genes that can run in families. It was in 1994 that the first of these was isolated, BRCA1, quickly followed by BRCA2, and since then, we've discovered at least another 10 genes that can cause breast cancer to run in families. And it now looks as if 7% to 8% of women who get breast cancer are carrying one of these inherited genes. And some of you may have seen interviews with women such as the actress Angelina Jolie, explaining how they've chosen to undergo preventative mastectomy with reconstruction to protect themselves from one of those genes. Now, what about everybody else who doesn't have breast cancer in the family? And that takes us to the second piece of the chart, which is a new type of gene testing called SNP testing. SNPs are tiny gene variations rather than a major mutation in a gene. And current evidence is that high-risk SNPs within our gene pool are accounting for about 12% of breast cancer risk. And so this new technology of SNP testing can give women who don't have breast cancer in the family early warning that they are in fact carrying an element of genetic risk. And are there other genes? The answer is yes. The third piece in the chart are those genes and SNPs that are as yet unidentified but which we know are there 
because there's good evidence that 25%, that's a quarter, of women who get breast cancer do have an underlying genetic predisposition. Okay, you say, well, that's a waste of time. If it's in your genes, that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. I've got news. Families from that first piece in the chart, breast cancer genes, often devastated by multiple deaths from cancer and often at a young age, can now enjoy an almost normal life expectancy, either by going down the prevention surgery route or by engaging in intensive screening with regular MR scans as well as mammography to give them really early diagnosis. And women in this and the second piece in the chart have another option. We now have three drugs available as prevention medication, which if you take them for a five-year course, will dramatically lower your lifetime risk. So as you can see, we're only a quarter of the way around the chart, and already today, we are stopping women getting on that conveyor belt. And as gene testing and SNP testing becomes more widely available, we're going to stop hundreds more. Okay, so what else can we do to really throw a spanner in the works of this breast cancer conveyor belt? And that takes us to the fourth piece of the chart, an important one, modifiable lifestyle factors. These are a list of things linked to Western diet and lifestyle, and none of them will be a surprise to you. It's uh, weight gain, poor diet, processed food, not enough exercise, too much alcohol, and then some things such as HRT, the pill, and the protective effect of breastfeeding. But what may be a surprise to you is just how big an effect these things have. It's, it's more than a third of the chart. And these are things that are helping to drive the conveyor belt. And so we can do something to help stop them. For example, if you're someone who's slipped into bad habits, gained weight, not enough exercise, too much processed food, you can stop yourself getting on the conveyor belt by adopting a healthy lifestyle, getting your BMI back to, down to normal, because healthy lifestyle, we know, does lower risk. So, we've looked at genes, we've looked at lifestyle, what else is there? And that takes us to the fifth piece of the chart, which are the non-modifiable risk factors. These are things like um, the age at which you had your first period, the age at which you had your first child, the age at which you went through menopause, and simply the fact of getting older. Things over which we've got very little control. An interesting calculation that's been made about this uh, and the previous uh, piece of the chart are that if Western societies returned to a pre-industrial culture of encouraging teenage pregnancy, early first childbirth, having lots and lots and lots of babies, and breastfeeding all of those lots of ba babies, then the incidence of breast cancer, that's the number of breast cancers in the West, would be cut in half. Obviously, this is not going to become government policy. <laughs> but there are scientists around the world trying to mimic hormonally the effect of these things in order to give us new prevention medication. Okay, you say, well, this piece of the chart, that definitely is a waste of time because you can't modify it. Surprisingly, it turns out that this piece of the chart does throw another spanner in the works of the breast cancer conveyor belt. And that's because we use it for something called a risk algorithm. In other words, a computer program that can predict your personal risk of getting breast cancer. It works by starting at the top of the chart with your family history, genes and SNPs. It then adds in your lifestyle factors, and then adds in these other things from your life as well to give a surprisingly accurate prediction of your risk of getting breast cancer over the next 10 years. And it links in with the sixth piece of the chart, which is a thing called breast density. Now, breast density has got nothing to do with how dense or lumpy your breasts feel. Rather, it's to do with how dense it looks on a mammogram. 
And women with a high mammogram breast density score have a higher risk of getting breast cancer. And so we add this in now to our latest risk algorithms to give an even more accurate prediction. For some women, their lifetime risk of getting breast cancer may be more than one in two. For others, it's less than one in 50. And a personalized risk prediction like this is very important for an individual because it gives you early warning and you can do something about it. And it's also important for a population because we could then target our screening at those in the higher risk groups. Then the last piece in the chart are environmental factors. And in particular, we need to consider environmental chemicals such as pesticides, preservatives, plasticizers, the sort of thing that we're all surrounded by. Many of them have been accused of causing breast cancer. We know that they are present at the scene of the crime because you can find them inside breast tissue and inside breast milk. We know they have an opportunity to commit the, cri the crime because in the lab, many of them will disrupt normal hormone and chemical pathways. But what's missing at the moment is the direct evidence of a cause and effect link, the smoking gun of conclusive epidemiology studies. Our own research, for example, into underarm deodorants has not been able to show a one-to-one -one link. And so for the moment, this piece of the chart is labelled as having uh, an unclear, uncertain impact. Finally then, let's put this all together. How can we prevent breast cancer? Well, as we've been around our chart, we've actually picked up several tools that can seriously mess with the breast cancer conveyor belt. And these fall into three broad themes, which conveniently all start with the letter P. The first theme is predict. We're getting very good now at our personal um, risk predictions. We've got gene testing. So why don't we test everyone at 30 years of age? Why not younger, 21 or 18? Because that way, we could pick up young women who would otherwise get breast cancer in their 30s or 40s or even in their 20s because they are carrying a breast cancer gene that they're completely unaware of. And we have our risk algorithms looking at SNPs and lifestyle and breast density. Why don't we do that every time someone comes for a mammogram? or for everyone at 30 years of age, because personalized risk predictions like this can save lives. Then the second theme, the second P, is prevent. We do have ways of actively preventing breast cancer. We have uh, our prevention surgery for those with the high-risk genes. We have prevention medication already being taken by thousands of women around the world. We've got new prevention medication in the research pipeline. We've got lifestyle interventions. There are changes you can make yourself, and we do need to think about public policy around reversing some of the current unhealthy diet and lifestyle trends. Then the third theme, the third P, is Protect. We need to protect the whole population with an up-to-date screening program. Our current screening programs could be made more effective and more personalized by tailoring the amount of screening that you receive to the level of risk that you have. And we need to start at a much younger age. And, good news, we do have new technologies for early detection on the horizon, which could protect the population much more effectively than simply by relying on mammography alone. So the vision is to predict, to prevent, and to protect. Our politicians are very good at saying the right words about the importance of prevention in healthcare. But in reality, it receives very little funding. It is time for some new thinking. 
Yes, we need new treatments, but prevention is a much better strategy and a much better vision for the future. And this is achievable. This is not clickbait. Yes, it's an ambitious dream, but we already have many of the tools available. What's needed now is a continued commitment and investment into prevention from us as researchers, from government, from us all. So please support us, encourage us on this journey, because together we can make the dream of preventing breast cancer become a reality.